A while back, we covered the surreal, upbeat, whacked out head trip known as The Night is Short, Walk On Girl. That film, directed by Masaaki Yuasa, was our introduction to a man who has quickly become one of our favorite anime directors working today. Upon doing our research for Walk On Girl, we discovered not only that the film was based on a novel of the same name, but also that said novel was penned by Tomihiko Morimi. While previously unfamiliar with Morimi and his work, one title quickly jumped to the top of the pile in terms of stories we were interested in exploring. And wouldn't you believe it, just around the same time, the film adaptation of this work was gearing up for release in America. Now that we've put some space between us and Walk On Girl, we figured it was high time to take a look at 2018's Penguin Highway. Tomihiko Morimi is an author who has been working for about 20 years now, publishing his first novel in 2003, around the time that he was studying in a master's program at Kyoto University. Since his arrival on the scene, Morimi has published more than a dozen books as well as a handful of short stories in anthologies. Morimi is known primarily for his abstract, sometimes surreal style, which lends itself heavily to science fiction. What's more, he is noted for often presenting his adopted home, Kyoto, as something of a character itself within many of his works. The novel upon which The Night is Short, Walk on Girl was based was released in 2006, early in Morimi's career as an author. Four years and five more releases later, he put out Penguin Highway, Morimi's eccentric ode to the scientific method. Where the former book dealt with one young woman's adventures through space and time, potentially within a single night, but who's counting? Penguin Highway is a more logical, point A to point B work. This time around, we're dealing with a young man, Aoyama, who is obsessed with logic and reason. Upon the appearance of a multitude of penguins in his hometown, Aoyama dedicates himself to uncovering their origin and the meaning of their presence. Eight years after the novel's publication, an anime adaptation was put to screen courtesy studio Colorido. Colorido is a child company of Twin Engine, the studio behind not only Walk On Girl, but also Lou Over the Wall, Masaaki Yuasa's other 2017 project. Helming the adaptation of Penguin Highway were Makoto Ueda in the writer's seat who had previously penned the anime series adaptation of The Tatami Galaxy. This series was co-written with Masaaki Yuasa, who directed the project, and Tomihiko Morimi, who had also written the book upon which the series was based. In the director's chair, Penguin Highway had Hiroyasu Ishida, a filmmaker working for a little more than a decade now whose other credits are exclusively short films. Ishida has gotten great press over the 2010s for his inventive, vibrant style, making him a perfect fit to adapt Morimi's novel, if the nature of Yuasa's other adaptations have anything to say about it. If you haven't checked it out already, be sure to give Penguin Highway a look. The film was brought stateside in 2019, thanks to Eleven Arts and Shout Studios. It was given a brief theatrical run before arriving on Blu-ray and DVD in August 2019. If you're a fan of science fiction, Morimi's style of whacked out weirdness, or if you're looking for a provocative up-and-comer in the form of Ishida, give this one a look. We can't delve too deep into the film without some considerable spoilers, so consider this your warning. For those who don't mind, or who have seen the film already, watch on to hear our take on Penguin Highway. Though truly, you owe it to yourself. Give Penguin Highway a watch, and then come back. As we said, the film revolves largely around a rookery of penguins appearing in Aoyama's hometown. He and his trusty friend, Uchida, set about investigating from where these baffling birds have arrived, and what their arrival may entail. Along the way, another classmate of theirs, Hamamoto, gets tangled up in matters when she uncovers another, even more perplexing mystery in the local forest. Add to the mix Aoyama's dental hygienist, with whom Aoyama is undoubtedly infatuated, and who may or may not have something to do with the local shenanigans. Placing a cherry on top of this sci-fi sundae, we have Suzuki, the local bully who is set on making Aoyama's life a living nightmare, but who is drawn back into the fray time and again thanks to events beyond his control. We would argue that the film has two major through lines within its narrative. The struggles between childhood and adulthood, and the interactions between reality and fantasy. The former theme is explored right out of the gates, within Aoyama's opening monologue. Here, we're shown that the fourth grader is obsessed with the number of days until he becomes an adult. This point comes up several times throughout, with Aoyama shown to be perpetually aware of his status as a child. Longingly, he strives toward the promise of becoming an adult. He'll be older, wiser, and taken more seriously. 
Naturally, this shows that Aoyama views childhood as a weakness when compared with adulthood. And yet, Aoyama is equally shown in the opening to consider himself ahead of his peers already. He explains that he's obviously and easily more advanced than them, both in terms of smarts and maturity. As one may expect, Aoyama shows profound immaturity at times. Aoyama states that he knows who he wants to marry already, in spite of being a young child. He also goes to the extent of stating, quote, I'm not conceited, that's what makes me great, end quote. Aoyama is shown to be super logical. His entire worldview is informed by his father's scientific mind, which we see through their kitchen table conversations. Aoyama is also married to his own biases and ideas, shooting down anything he views as childish or illogical. One has to wonder if our reaction here to Aoyama's childish nature is born out of our own status as adults. Do we look down on him for playing at being an adult, or are we meant to disrespect him in this way? It's a notable thought experiment, as the film shows throughout that the four main kids all have good points and bad points, just like adults. The key difference is that Aoyama pretends to be an adult when still only a child. One of the examples in which Aoyama shows his skills is in how he handles the local bully throughout the film. It's shown that Suzuki and his cronies bully the three main kids, but they're not given the same gravity that one might expect in a narrative told from a child's perspective. No, in this case, Aoyama handles the situation in a rather mature manner. This is because, while Suzuki and company are super annoying and immature, Aoyama knows that their interactions aren't the end of the world. What's more, he knows how to get under Suzuki's skin. Over time, Aoyama grows more mature and handles Suzuki even better. But, in the first instance, Aoyama convinces Suzuki that he'll have to have most, if not all, of his teeth pulled at the dentist's office. This, in turn, annoys the dental hygienist with whom Aoyama is infatuated. This unnamed woman, as it turns out, seems to give Aoyama the time of day more than most adults in the film, which works out just fine for Aoyama. While the duo may be learning to play together, and they may discuss the scientific implications of what Aoyama is reading or investigating, his primary interests lay elsewhere. In short, Aoyama is just broaching puberty and is, well, all about them opi. This he treats like a scientific problem to be understood, both a show of his character and an examination of the border between childhood and adulthood. Aoyama is trying to understand logically why the hygienist's bosom makes him feel different than any other bosoms. Here, we're reminded that he thinks himself mature, yet this shows he's not sure what he's dealing with through puberty. In other words, he's being presented with what he sees as an illogical situation and trying to understand it through logic. As shown in their first scene together, just after Aoyama bullies Suzuki back, the hygienist is trying to teach Aoyama to not be cocky. She recognizes his skills and the potential his scientific mind holds, yet she wants him to grow up to be a good person. They bond over something both adults and children can appreciate, a game which is simple to learn, yet difficult to master. At one point, Aoyama ends up spending the night with the hygienist. While nothing inappropriate happens, and the duo only play sh** and speak about science, Aoyama's age comes back into play here. This discrepancy is subtly shown through his comment that he couldn't see her for a while, after their unsanctioned night at her place. And in spite of this all, Aoyama is shown to be already in the throes of both adulthood and being illogical, thanks to the hygienist. He states that, through his research, Aoyama hopes to win a Nobel Prize, primarily to impress the hygienist. On its face, this sounds absurd, no matter how captivating his research may be. Yet, we must understand that Aoyama hates illogical matters. Without realizing it, he has begun to bridge the gap into accepting that some matters in this world are illogical and that adults sometimes strive for the moon despite everything. This leads into the second, arguably primary focus of Penguin Highway, the intersections of reality and fantasy, or logic and illogic. Rewinding to the beginning again, penguins begin to appear in the town, 
Aoyama, Uchida, and Hamamoto look for a reason together, with this research taking up the bulk of the film. Uchida keeps one of the penguins secretly, naming it Penta. Unfortunately, Penta disappears once the boys and the bird travel too far from the city. Here, Aoyama finds a new route to explore in his logical investigation. Further along the way, it seems that the source of the penguins may be supernatural, rather than them being shipped in from Antarctica, or wherever these feisty beasts originate. In fact, only the hygienist seems capable of creating the penguins alongside horror beasts which she refers to as Jabberwockies. This might all sound wild and crazy and, like we said, illogical, but together the three kids and the hygienist team up to learn a logical reason for these incidents. Here, we see logic and illogic butting heads. Simultaneous to the appearance of the black and white birds, a silver moon blinks into existence in the local forest. According to Uchida, a rumor crops up that this moon makes one sick when observed. Neither Uchida nor Aoyama know what this moon might be, yet they have different contrasting reactions. Uchida believes the rumor, and is in turn threatened and scared by the prospect of encountering the silver moon. Aoyama is skeptical and wishes to investigate. Hamamoto, meanwhile, laughs at the moon, wanting to keep a cautious distance, yet still seeking answers. At the entrance to the woods where the moon sits, Aoyama and Uchida encounter another anomaly. A stop sign sits out of place, heightening Uchida's fear and stealing Aoyama's resolve. Everything in this land, similar to Alice's Wonderland, which is referenced throughout the hygienist's Jabberwocky, is illogical and terrifying, much like growing up. These different takes on the nature of existence and logic show how the characters differ with their approaches to growing up. The far-fetched yet ultimately logical explanation for these incidents, which Aoyama buys into, is offered by his father. Dad argues that reality may exist within a bag, and that the silver moon, later called the ocean, may be a tear in the bag. In this scenario, the penguins and the hygienist may be trying to close the hole in the fabric between our reality and the reality on the other side. This is a leap in logic in a way, yet Aoyama is willing to buy into it given that he can follow the logic of the matter. In addition to presenting interests which lead toward adulthood, the hygienist also provides Aoyama with several experiments and mysteries. He is intrigued by her, but is also captivated by trying to unravel her mysteriousness. Does she have anything to do with the ocean, with the penguins, with the broken signpost, and so on? Even here, the illogical humanity Aoyama won't admit to possessing keeps him on his toes. At one point, she offers to pull out one of his teeth using a line of thread. This occurs outside of the dentist's office. Yet Aoyama has been through this before and knows he'll be okay once the tooth is removed. In spite of this logical nature, he runs around after her, for which she criticizes him. To this, Aoyama says his body is doing it involuntarily. Aoyama is either unaware, or too proud, to admit that he, as a person, has some illogical parts to himself. There's always an excuse, a reason, or some form of logic for his behavior. This shows both his nature and his immaturity through his inability to accept fault for any wrongs. Yet, as the film progresses, these excuses don't always pan out. A lesson Aoyama needs to learn to grow up. Aoyama might not understand much about interpersonal relations given his logical nature. On the other hand, Aoyama's apparent subordinate peer, Uchida, understands illogical human interactions while he might not be book smart or scientific. This is demonstrated when Uchida is shown to know that Suzuki likes Hamamoto. Uchida claims this is thanks to Suzuki teasing Hamamoto. Aoyama can't understand this, saying there's no reason Suzuki would give her trouble if he actually liked her. Aoyama also doesn't seem to understand that Hamamoto is jealous of the hygienist thanks to how much time and affection Aoyama offers her. Again, both of these show not just Aoyama's immaturity and lack of understanding, but also how closely he clings to logic as keeping the world in order and less scary. These two thematic threads, the combat between adulthood and childhood, as well as logic versus illogic, come to a head by the narrative's conclusion. At the end, Aoyama learns to remain scientific but to gain a certain perspective in illogical matters. This signifies his transition into adulthood, and the beginning of his maturation. As it turns out, the hygienist is somehow directly tied not just to the penguins, but also to the ocean which is more than likely a hole between two dimensions. The penguins have gone on their merry way, closing up the ocean, 
while the hygienist has been creating the penguins and channeling their energy to these ends. In the end, both Aoyama and the hygienist learn that she is set to disappear. For once, he accepts that he doesn't totally understand what this entails, yet he commits the remainder of his life and his career as a scientist to finding her again. Earlier, he wouldn't have done something like this. As a child, Aoyama's motivation was discovery and understanding, while now he has a direct goal, finding the woman he is destined to marry once again. When the hygienist questions whether someone like her, a seemingly ethereal being, truly exists, Aoyama goes a step further to console her and himself. Aoyama says to her, quote, I have memories with you. Those are real. End quote. On top of this, Aoyama drinks coffee multiple times in the film. The first time, he's grossed out by the bitterness, but enjoys it at the end. This is a common symbol of maturation, given that children are expected to not enjoy the taste of coffee. What's more, the film ends on a shot of Aoyama's sketch of the hygienist sleeping, completed during the night at her place, meaning that the hygienist is, for all intents and purposes, real. His statement about finding her later in life, combined with his changing ideas about coffee and his sketch of the hygienist, show that Aoyama has truly evolved throughout the film. Aoyama has not only matured into adulthood, but has accepted that not all matters can be explained logically. As we're shown, his theories about the world explain a lot, yet they aren't fulfilling given how staunch and lacking in love they are. With the introduction of his love for the hygienist, his life can move forward in a genuine manner. Even then, he retains his pride, vowing to not tell Hamamoto's scientist father about his research. It's his work, and he won't offer it up. So that's Penguin Highway, the wacky, lovely, strikingly beautiful take on another novel by Tomihiko Morimi. Fans of anime, sci-fi, surreal art, and penguins will find something to love. Let us know what you thought of the film in the comments below, and what other Morimi projects we ought to cover in the future. This one certainly wasn't what we expected, but we were pleasantly surprised by what we found.